Housing Finance reported a 19% jump in H1 with regards to the profit after tax. But for me, what struck me was the 500% jump that we saw in the non-interest income and a 258% jump that we saw in other fees. Let's begin on that note. What were the key drivers? Yeah, I think, I think what we're seeing now is the, um, the culmination or the fruits coming through of our group strategy. So when we launched our strategy in 2012, one of the key things we were very clear we wanted to achieve was a diversification um, from our reliance on interest-based income to non-interest-based income. Now we're achieving that in different ways and it's an ongoing process. One key one of course is through, is through the development arm, our subsidiary, Kenya Building Society, which we relaunched in 2012 and now has started generating profits. So some of those um, um, uh, numbers you saw were a result of house sales that we have done, so gain on profit on those house sales. Another key contributor has been our insurance agency, which we also um, launched in 2012. The other is also we have also rolled out a retail banking strategy. And with that, we're looking to uh, get more uh, customers, especially in terms of current accounts and savings accounts. And with those come the various transactional fees um, uh, that we earn. And last but not least, uh, we got our Forex uh, license last year. So you saw our Forex income June last year was zero. Uh, at the end of this year, it's 17 million. So it, even it now is beginning to, to, to contribute. And you'll see more and more of this going forward. Sounds like that is what we can expect, a lot of high growth given that uh, we are moving from a low base. But let's look at the operating expenses whereby I saw it rose by about 22%. And if you look at the total interest expenses, they grew faster than the income. What are the plans that you're putting in place to continue your costs? Our operating costs actually only increased 5% year on year. And that is actually despite us growing our staff count by 40% uh, to cater for our new retail banking strategy, and the cost of uh, refurbishing branches, setting up new branches, and then the ongoing implementation of our new core banking system. So these are all strategic investments, it's all strategic costs that we're putting in. Uh, just to support the strategy. Frank, now let's talk about the cash call. Because early in the year, uh, Housing Finance had announced that they'll be doing a 20 billion uh, corporate bond. And I now understand that that one has been put on hold. Why have you put it on hold? Yeah, I, I'd say put on hold because of the market factors. And as we've seen this year, and you've even seen from our funding costs and our interest expenses, the costs of funds in this market, and which are really driven by the Treasury bill and Treasury bond rates, have been increasing. So if we were to go to the market today uh, for a seven-year bond, it would be priced against the five-year or 10-year bond. So you'd be looking at 13, 13 and half percent. And then on the same hand, you may expect to be bringing down lending rates. So it just will not make sense. So we continue to uh, roll out our retail banking strategy that will bring in the necessary funding in terms of current accounts and savings accounts. We've also, during the one-year period, um, uh, gotten more uh, loans, uh, offshore loans, and primarily from North Fund, uh, which you've also seen in the numbers. So we, we have different funding strategies. The bond, we will, we will do it, but we have to get the timing right. And with Britam increasing their stake uh, in the board, will that change anything? Of course, we've seen uh, uh, Britam saying that they're going to swap their shares with Equity Bank to have a larger stake in housing finance. Do you see that having any change in terms of strategy? It won't change it because Britam is already a significant shareholder at 20%. With Britam, we already have a very strong uh, collaboration in terms of joint product, uh, uh, product launches. We have the Home Freedom, which we launched with them in 2012, I think, or 2011. We have uh, Ezesha, we launched with them last year. We are also um, getting a lot of training for insurance agency agents from them. They get a lot of our insurance business. We get corporate deposits from them. So there's a strong relationship. So we can only get stronger. Let's now talk about the construction sector as a whole. And if you look at the Q1 performance uh, that we just saw with regards to the GDP, we saw a slowdown in the construction sector, uh, growing at about 4.1%. Previously, it was nearly double that figure You know, the last year. How will this affect housing finance? Because, of course, new houses will lead to new mortgages. How do you see this playing out? I think what we're seeing is the impact of the elections. Okay, because again, with the construction industry, it is a, quite a long, winded pipeline. So from the time a developer starts conceiving a project 
getting the master plan done, getting the approvals, getting the financing and breaking ground, a year, a year plus can pass. So towards the end of 2012, uh, to the run-up uh, uh, to the elections, a lot of developers slowed down. So that's the effect we're seeing. Frank, let's talk about the outlook, especially in light of the World Bank downgrading Kenya's uh, growth projection to about 4.9, 4.7%. Of course, we saw the government uh, projecting a growth of about 5.8%. Uh, of course, this will have a ripple impact when you're looking at uh, the economy. For you, how do you see this translating uh, to your business? I see, if first we talk about the macro construction industry, I still see a lot of challenges. We've seen increased uh, taxes in the cost of steel, We've seen proposals to increase other fees by different government bodies, just making the whole, especially housing, the focus on housing sector even more expensive, and thus widening the affordability gap that we're all trying to uh, bridge. So that will definitely have an impact on all of us players in the market.